Hey guys, today we're going to talk about setting up a uh, Illustrator file for printing stickers. So what we have to do is set up what's called a, a die line for a die cut that the uh, vinyl cutter printer uh, can <clears throat> outline to be able to cut out the shape. And that's what's interesting about stickers, right, is the ability to print your colorful, <clears throat> colorful artwork with a unique and interesting outline. Now, most files, when you're preparing an image or some other Photoshop file, show up with a white rectangle around your artwork. Illustrator files, by default, don't have a background, and so they give us the ability to make these transparent backgrounds with outline shapes. So, first step is going to be starting with a piece of Illustrator artwork. In this case here, I have a um, RCC Tiger logo. And you can see the design has an interesting outline already there. And we can build the outline that the knife is going to cut uh, directly using the file here. So if you've got an Illustrator vector file, even better, because all the stuff you need is right there in the vector outline shape. So let's talk about setting it up correctly. If we want to adapt the shape of the artwork and make it work, what we're gonna do is make a copy first. So I'm gonna grab the artwork, and then I'm gonna press Option on my keyboard, or Alt if I'm on a PC, and drag the artwork to the side, and it's making a duplicate. Okay, I'm just gonna slide it over here so I have a little more space. Okay, now I really don't need all the other information, and I certainly don't wanna confuse the, the die outline that I'm gonna draw. So I need to convert all this into one solid shape. And that's where we use Pathfinder. Pathfinder is really helpful for this. And if you look at the Pathfinder palette, if you don't have it open, go to the window menu, look for Pathfinder. And the first step is making sure that all of the artwork is selected and then pressing on Unite. Unite joins everything. All those separate pieces combines them into one solid shape. This shape now matches the outline of the largest vector shapes that were in the original artwork. Okay, now we have a couple decisions to make. Do we want to have a small white outline in addition to the orange outline here on this logo? Do we wanna have that similar to other stickers? You know, a lot of times stickers have these, these extra little white shapes, these little white borders. Or do we want the orange of the logo to extend beyond the cut so that the cut is exactly on that orange line? And what we're really talking about here is whether or not our artwork needs a bleed. So if something is on a white background and the color is cropped inside the boundary of the white line, then there is no bleed. But if we want that orange to extend longer and past the cut edge, then we need to set up a bleed. So I'll kind of show you both scenarios here. I'm gonna take the artwork back here and align it to the top of the Tiger logo. Okay, and you can see it's joined, it's covering the whole thing. Then what I'm gonna do, let's go with the first scenario where I'm not going to, um, to use a bleed. I'm gonna have a white edge. Well, this shape here is exactly the same size as the logo. I need to make it larger. But here's the thing, you can't just scale it. I'm gonna change the color here so you can see it. You can't just scale it because if you scale it, notice how it gets distorted and it doesn't make a uniform even outline around the edge of that secondary outline. So instead, I need to do something called um, offset. So I'm gonna to go to the object menu and I'm gonna to go to path and I'm gonna select offset path. So what this does is it traces your shape and offsets, offsets it, makes it larger by a point value that I set. So I'm gonna click on that offset path and I'm gonna select preview so I can see what it's doing. So notice, I click that preview. Right here, it's adjusting it and expanding it by 0.1389 inch, a fraction of an inch, hard to um, 
to measure, you know, and, and visualize. But basically, you know, 0.25 is a quarter inch. So 0.13 is almost an eighth of an inch, which if you read decimal is 0.125 is an eighth of an inch. You know, so you kind of have to look at a ruler and decide how large you want that gap to be. I think it needs to be even a little bit smaller. So maybe, maybe if I just change that number to 0.1 and see what happens. That's probably a little better. And then I'm gonna select okay. And so then it's gonna complete that transition. Now, what did it do? It made a copy and then expanded that line. So actually, I don't need this original one anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Okay. So here I have the, the new outline and it's larger than the shape. So it's gonna give me that white border all the, way around, all the way around my artwork. Next thing I need to do is set the proper stroke color so that my artwork has the proper stroke on it. Now I've already preset in this template, the color I need. And if you look at the color palette, bring that over here. These preset colors were uh, set up by the manufacturer of the printer that we use, the vinyl cutter printer. And it wants to see a spot color named cut contour. Now that cut contour says that whenever the printer sees that color, it knows that that is gonna be the outline color that the knife is gonna follow to cut. And if you happen to look, these are a few other spot colors that are set up with our printer. We have RDG white, which means it would actually print with a white ink or it has metallic silver, so it would actually print with a metallic silver ink. This one is perf cut contour, meaning instead of cutting a solid line, it would actually cut a dashed line and that orange isn't, isn't one of them. So I need a solid cut through the sticker. So I need to use cut contour. So as long as that color is used and it's named cut contour and the stroke line is at least one point, when I save this file, uh, the printer is gonna be able to interpret it properly. Okay, let's do one more step. So from here, what I need to do is make a printable file. So I'm gonna to go to the save menu and I'm gonna do save as. Now I have a couple choices in terms of file format. Um, I could do an EPS file or a PDF file, or if I'm lucky and my printer can read the Illustrator file, that's fine. But for this scenario, I'm gonna say Adobe PDF and I'm gonna click save but there's a setting I need to make sure that I select to make sure this works right. And that's gonna be under output. I can leave all the other things alone, but what I really need to do is make sure that under output, it says no color conversion. So what does that mean? That means that it is going to leave the colors alone. It's gonna leave the sticker colors as CMYK for the printer, and it's gonna leave the spot color alone and include that cut contour spot color in the file so essentially, I've added five colors to this file for the printer to read. The four printing colors and then the fifth cutting color. And that should be it. That should be all I need to do. Okay, I did mention that what if we wanted to bleed? Okay, well, if we want to bleed, I'm going to need to make a duplicate of this. So let's say I take this file, uh, this outline shape, and I'm going to copy it and I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna paste it in place. Okay, what did that do? What that did was it took the exact shape and then it pasted it right on top of the other one. So I really can't even tell that it's there. Okay, and the color isn't correct on this copy file. What I'm doing is I'm creating a orange shape that's gonna be slightly larger than the sticker that the outline is gonna cut around. So I need to change this to the orange color from the sticker. Okay, you see, there it is. And I'm gonna go up here and rearrange the artwork and send this behind the sticker file. Okay. 
Now, what you still see is the orange, the new orange shape I made, and then that cut contour shape that uh, I, uh, I created earlier. Now, what I really need to do is actually get rid of this one because this is no longer in the right place. And instead, what I'm going to do is click and um, Sorry, um, I did not want to do that. What I'm going to do here is click on the orange one and I need to make the stroke size of that orange one wider than the cut. Okay, and so why did I do that? I did that so that this orange shape underneath extends beyond the visual boundary of the cut line. That way that cut line, when it cuts, will cut inside the edge of the orange and I won't get a sliver of white vinyl showing through. Okay, so that's not the only way to create a bleed, but you just wanna pay attention to your artwork and make sure that if a color needs to extend beyond the edge of the cut line, you need to make sure that there is an extra piece that's that same color larger than the cut line so that it uh, stays within the boundary. Um, of course, that could be done with a square or rectangle. It doesn't really matter because all of this extra area is going to be cut off. All right, so that's how you're going to set up a cut contour line on vector art using the artwork that's already on your page. All right, so thanks for listening. See you next time.